A new note uh, coming out from our next guest asking a very big question, which is this. Is Alphabet the world's leading media company? The note says that YouTube can grow from roughly $40 billion business today to what he thinks is a more than $240 billion standalone asset. Joining us right now, Michael Nathanson, the man who wrote that note, SVB Moffat Nathanson founding partner, senior research analyst. Good morning to you. Boy, do you think that this is an undervalued asset, it sounds like, Michael. I really do. I think the issue is it's an internet company asset. When you put your media hat on, you realize it's probably the best position asset going forward for media investors as cord cutting picks up and streaming grows, you know, it's it's really at the, the best position uh, to take advantage of all the trends that we're looking at right now. Therefore, though, the question becomes, is the, is the conundrum for investors that the multiple of that unit is not baked into this valuation that we see in the larger in the larger umbrella that is Alphabet? Or are you effectively arguing that this should be spun out? And if it was spun out, would it have all the same kind of benefits that it does inside of a Google? Right. So I'm not arguing that it'd be spun out. I'm, I'm arguing that people have focused on the advertising opportunity at YouTube because that's been the core business. Our argument is that there are so many other growth drivers ahead that the growth will accelerate going forward because of those drivers, right? So I'm just arguing that you look at it as a classic, classic internet advertising play, you're missing the big picture, right? So I'm not arguing spin it out. I'm saying it's, it's so well positioned that the growth will accelerate from here uh, and, and be double digits for the next couple of years pretty easily. There's been a, a big question, and clearly YouTube went a completely different direction insofar as paying for original content, premium original content, the way so many of the other big players, the Netflixes, uh, Disney, everybody else uh, has done. Do you think that was the right choice, and do you think that should remain the choice? It was interesting is you know, when they just signed the NFL Sunday ticket deal, and that was the first time they actually wrote a big check for content. And I can see them getting bigger and bigger into sports. So to me, competing on scripted content with all those other companies you named, that's a hard, hard game. But they can you know, keep signing these big checks. Sports is the glue to the, you know, the cable industry. If they can pick up some more sports rights, I think they'll really separate themselves from the pack. So I think scripted is too competitive, but they really can move down a sports lane, which to me – would be really, saying, you know, productive. Michael, here, yeah. you and I, I don't know if we're going to disagree, but we may differ. I'm unclear. It's unclear to me why they need sports. Unlike the other subscription packages that you could argue need sports to, to, to draw folks in to pay that, that subscription, in a strictly advertising-driven world, most of it either user-generated or, in some cases, professionally generated and put, put on the service, how much of the sports piece of it is what's bringing people in or needs to bring them in? Well, sports, basically, as we transition from a world of linear channel to streaming, sports is keeping the linear channels together, right? To me, it's an aggressive move, an offensive move, to try to you know, quickly accelerate the, the change of consumption. So when I say sports, I don't see them getting an NFL contract. They have Sunday ticket. But will it be an NBA package, right? You know, will there be more college sports they can sign? So I could see them offering with with a league, right, a package of sports rights that are no longer available in, in the linear world, right? So I'm not saying go out there and get an, another NFL deal. They have what they need. I just think as the, the bundle crumbles, right. there'll be pockets of sports that will be better served in streaming. And to me, YouTube's in a good position to start selling channels with, you know, with other leagues in tandem with them. How bullish are you on YouTube TV, which effectively is the bundled product? I'm actually a subscriber of it. I think it's one of the best services in terms of just the, the user interface and, and the way it works than anything I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, so Mike, I should be a, a paid spokesman for YouTube TV. I have it as well. Everyone we talk to, we try to convert them over to it. We're, we think in four or five years' time that YouTube TV will be a bigger a bigger uh, provider of channels than Comcast or Charter, right? So Craig and I have this very negative view of where Comcast and Charter are going in terms of pay TV. We think YouTube TV will get over 10 million subs in four or five years. It will be the dominant provider of, of channels. And you know, it's a great product. And I think as more people experience it, YouTube will get more strength. 
and then they will really be in the, in the driver's seat of deciding what the next bundles look like, right? So I'm as bullish as you are. I just think you sample it. Though, people though the just flip adopt side is quickly. economically, you could argue that YouTube TV is empty calories. And, and when I say empty calories, oh, yeah. it's, it, it's, this is not a high margin business. In fact, um, you know, I don't, I, they don't break out the numbers, so it's a little hard to know. Some people could argue they're losing money doing this. Yeah, no, we're not arguing that that is, we, we agree, it's a hard business to be in, right? But I think what happens is by creating that scale and that traffic through YouTube TV, they're going to start selling more channels, right? The Sunday Ticket deal was an experiment to sell more channels. They've got deals with HBO Max and Paramount Plus. So I can see them basically trying to make money by selling added channels. And I don't disagree with you. I think the, the streaming business in terms of being a channel business is a hard business. It's true in linear. It's true in this world. But I think the point we're making is that YouTube is positioned to be a gatekeeper going forward. So when people complain that they can't find things they want to watch, YouTube right. will create an interface where you can find things. So most people's homes have four streaming services. Everyone complains about there's no central place to see what I have. So I just think this is a long-term right. pivot where they can be one of the two or three major right. companies in controlling the interface.